Hi, I'm David with Lighten Up Technologies and welcome to the final sneak peek of Cubot version 3. I'll be going through all of the features uh, within V3, or most of the features actually. We have a couple of more that we're still implementing, uh, but we'll get a good view of what we've got going on with V3 and we're really close to the release date for uh, this great version. Uh, hope you enjoy it and uh, let's get started. So let's start with the landing screen in Cubot version 3. That's the screen when you first boot up the app, this is what the, the screen lands on. And what you see on the left is a series of buttons, they're in yellow, and they have to do with stuff that's under the hood like the settings, uh, resetting the Bluetooth connection, and quilting options, and stuff like that. Uh, let's take a look at quilting options. That's one thing, there's uh, something new in there that's really, really exciting. So let's press that button and see what we have there. Uh, you see a button that says modify page render delay. That has to do with the graphics when we use the modify uh, routine later on. And we want to have that, it's basically the update rate um, after you do manipulations, how quickly it, it updates the screen. That's uh, behind the, you know, that is a, truly an under the hood kind of setting where you set it once and then forget it. Uh, the next one though is look at, look at what we have, tie off stitches. Yes, we have built-in tie-off stitches in Cubot version 3. Not only do we have it built in, but we can turn off and on the tie-off stitches for um, the beginning of the, of the pattern and at the end of the pattern independently. Furthermore, we can also change the length of the tie-off stitch. So if you like really small tie-off stitches, uh, you can set that length to a very small number. It, what it does, what Cubot does, it will start the pattern, then go just a little bit. What you specify, it goes the distance that, distance that you specify, then back, and then continues with the pattern to tie off the stitches. So if you like really small stitches, you can say a 32nd of an inch or 0.03 inches. If you like to have a little bit more, uh, more tie off stitches, you can say a quarter of an inch or 0.25. But that's really, really neat. And that will carry on with all patterns in all quilting that you do with Cubot, uh, th as long as you have the, the tie-off stitches turned on. The one exception to this is when you use percent restart, it won't do tie-off stitches in the middle of a design, as uh, it, it avoids that during the point percent restart uh, feature. So, uh, and that's kind of good because you want to be able to, just by the nature of doing a percent restart or restarting the design, you're always going to go over the, uh, a previously quilted portion anyway. So it, there's no need to do tie off stitches on top of that. So, uh, that's a really, really nice, uh, feature. Now the one, now let's take a look at the four blue buttons. We have pattern quilting, quilting, line quilting, record free motion, and design management. I'm going to get into pattern quilting and line quilting. I'm going to start with design management though. So let's press that button and see what's under the hood there. What you have when we press that button is we go to a screen which uh, then we, is kind of a launching pad where we can see all the designs that we have in our tablet. We can then further subdivide those designs into block designs or edge-to-edge uh, -edge designs and so forth. It's really kind of cool to do that. And let's take a look at what happens if we press a, uh, just touch our finger on a design and let's look at the menu options that show up then. So I have this design here that's, uh, let's see, it's an edge-to-edge -edge design, GTEE003A. And I press the button or I press the icon once and I get this menu that shows up. And what's really cool about this menu is it says zoom in, reduce nodes or add to favorites. Well, add to favorites is a pretty easy thing. If you click add to favorites, it adds it to a favorites folder, which is always available when we're quilting later. So if, and it, it's a good thing. It's kind of the way to look at it is you put your favorite designs in your favorites folder and it kind of keeps them separated nicely. Uh, but let's look at zoom. Let's press that zoom in feature. We press it in and press it and it zooms into the design. So especially with edge to edge designs, if the longer they are and the shorter they are in height, 
the more they just look like a line on the thumbnail icons that show up in design management. And what we have here is a way to just tap on the design, press zoom in, and then you can see the full extent of the design. And if you tap that screen again, it goes back to the previous screen. Let's tap that design one more time. And we're going to choose that, choose that reduce nodes option. And this is an exciting feature that we have built into Cubot version 3. It is an amazing node reduction algorithm. Let's take a look at it. When you have the original, what you can see is the original node count in the reduced node count in the brown box, and it shows the percent of original uh, as far as the nodes are concerned uh, underneath that. And when we first open this up, it's at everything's at 100%, just as it is designed. We have a slider underneath uh, the design that shows up. We can slide that slider to the left to make the number of nodes smaller. And you notice that when we do that, it also redraws the design in red. Well, it doesn't get rid of the first drawing that's in black. It's putting that red design right on top of the black design. And you can see the effect of the node reduction. And what's really neat is if you have a, a, if you have a design, or this again is usually with edge-to-edge -edge designs which have lots of nodes, thousands, sometimes uh, tens of thousands of nodes. In particular, this one uh, well, this one only had 6,256 nodes, but there are designs out there that have maybe 40,000 nodes. And not all of those nodes are needed to get the design to quilt out properly. With all of those nodes, because we do a lot of graphic intensive work with the uh, version 3, those nodes can slow down some of the processes that V3 goes through when rendering the design on the screen. And when the nodes aren't needed for for quilting quality, it's really just wasting everybody's time. So we have this built-in node reducer. So if you come into a problem design, you say, wow, this kind of lags if I'm trying to do some, something later on. Uh, try running the node reducer. So for instance, I've got this up right now, or for example, I've got this up right now, and I'm going to zoom. I'm going to use my fingers to gesture in, and I'm zooming into the design. And we'll let it redraw here. And you can see I'm zoomed in quite a bit. And I've reduced the design to 72% 70 per, of the original design, meaning it has 72% of the original number of nodes, which there's really no effect I see in this screen. Now I'm going to zoom in a little bit further. So I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to look to really get down to the detail here. And we'll let it re refresh the screen. And I see maybe just a hint where the red line is off from the black. But let me accentuate this. Let me take the process too far. Okay, so I'm going to reduce the nodes way too much, what I think will be way too much. And you can see on the screen here, you can see that now I start to see an effect where I've reduced it too much. It's the, the red line is no longer right on top of the black line. And you may want to try quilting this out because I, I am zoomed in quite a bit. You might not notice it, but let me. But I've reduced that to be 36% of the original design, which is really small. I've gone from 6,000 nodes to 2,200 nodes. So let me pull it back just a bit. Now I'll go a little bit more. And let me, you know, I bet you that would quilt out just fine, just like that. So what, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to save that reduced design. Now, what Cubot V3 does when I press save, it automatically saves it and it gives it its original name underscore reduced.plt. And that file then you can pull into design software. Of course, you can use it when you quilt it out with your uh, pattern quilting option uh, with V3. And, or you can save it, like I said before, you can save it to the computer and store it for, for use later. It's a really nice option, this reduced, uh, this node reduction feature, and it makes quilting, streamlines your quilting process quite a bit. So, when do you use that? Do you use the node reduction when you have a super large design that you pull in from, you've pulled in from software or downloaded off the internet or, or wherever, a CD that you might have, 
and you just want to make sure that it's as optimized as possible. It doesn't hurt to run the node reducer, reduce the nodes as much as you can, uh, keeping the original um, resolution or precision. You know, you don't want to have it so that it's just a bunch of faceted lines. You want to keep all the curves and everything in place. But if you can reduce it, it makes your life a lot easier and it makes, uh, makes all the processing uh, handling that the app does on the processor in the in your tablet makes it a lot easier. So that's just a heads up for for doing things with the node reducer. Uh, within design management, if you look at the screen, we still have the block designs, border designs, floral designs. You can add folders if, in case you have a quilt for a particular customer. Um, you can make a folder and say, you know, Betty's quilt, and then store all the designs for Betty's quilt in that and it just keeps all of your um, designs in place and keeps them handy and it does more of the thinking for you as far as your design management than you really need to do. So it makes your life easier basically. So let's take a look at pattern quilting. This is the quilting that uh, you normally do and normally have done if you already have a Cubot version one or two. And for those new users, this is like when you choose a pattern and you just want to quilt it out. So that's why we called it pattern quilting. So let's press that button. And we see on the right hand of the, of the screen, we see the design pane or the quilting pane. On the left, we see uh, a brown box that has the x-axis and y-axis coordinates, and it has some buttons, set point, undo, and done. And how many points do we need to define the boundary? How many, how many is necessary? Well, the answer is, is as many as you need. Uh, it has to be more than three to define an area, so the minimum amount of points is three, but the maximum amount is as many as it takes to define your area properly. So if you're doing art quilts, say, that have uh, something that's long and flowing, and before four points really couldn't capture the essence of the, of the space, well now you can use 30 points, 50 points, it doesn't matter, just choose points along the border or the boundary of the block that you want to quilt in, and press go. So let's do that. So on my quilt here, I've just got a little little quilt. We're going to do a simple design. It's a, uh, a little print of these houses that will show in the future here. I've got some, you know, little tricks up my sleeve. I'm going to show you some neat stuff that V3 can do. But uh, it's a good good panel that we can test something out on. So I'm going to set, uh, I'm going to set, I don't know, four or more points as my boundary. So I just go around the boundary and I press go on Cubot to set a point or I can press the set point button on the app itself on the tablet. I'll do that for the second point. I'll just press the button and I'll come down here set point. I'll do one in the middle of the bottom boundary, one in the other corner, up the other side and I'm gonna press the right arrow on Cubot head or I can press done on the tablet. I'll press done on the tablet. And you can see it puts the boundary onto the tablet screen. Now <clears throat> I'm going to go into my uh, all my designs and I'm going to scroll through them and look at something, some of these geometric ones at the end that don't really make too much sense for this block. It's not anything homey, it's a little bit more geometric and spacey, but why not? It's a sneak peek not a heirloom quilt. So here we do. I'm going to choose this one right here. You can see it puts the block into the area. Well, let's take a look at all of the modify commands that we can do right now. Uh, it is amazing what we can do in V3. So let's modify that design. It, when we hit modify, it pulls up the modify set of commands or buttons in the le that left hand pane. At the top we can go back to the original design, undo a step of our uh, manipulations, we can revert to the or, or we can recenter the design in the area. We also have two buttons called mirroring buttons. We can mirror, flip the design along a, a vertical axis or a horizontal axis, which is really nice. 
Underneath that we have arrows for fine tuning the placement. It's not the fine tune command, but we fine, can fine tune the placement. We have areas of yellow, and those areas of yellow show the numbers, how things have, how much ha things have moved. So in the position uh, area right now, it says zero, zero. We haven't moved it. Well, I'm just gonna use my one finger and I'm going to gesture over that design and I'm going to move it. And as I move that, you can see that those numbers in the yellow block boxes change, telling me how much I've moved it. Well, say I, say I know I want to actually tell it I want to move a half an inch this way to the right and a half an inch down from the original position. I just click in there and type in 0.5, done, OK, and then a half inch down, minus 0.5. I have that much control over all of the aspects of placement. I can write down from the easiest one is the finger, that's the most coarse. The next one is the arrows, it's a little bit finer, and then right down to the number I want to alter things. So <clears throat> that is very cool. The next is the scale. So I've done one finger, now I'm going to use two fingers. Now with the scale, I use my two fingers, and you can see there's a green button in that, in that trio of buttons where it says scale X scale Y, and in the middle there's a green button that shows a square and four arrows coming out equally. That means proportion scaling is on. Pretty cool. So as I move my fingers and I stretch it and shrink it, it moves that design or scales that design proportionally. Pretty cool. Well, I'm going to press that button, and when I press that button, it goes to off. So now proportional scaling is off. And it tells you on the screen there, the icon gives it away, that you can change the, in different manner, you can change the horizontal scaling and the vertical scaling. So let's do that. And it's also what I call smart non-proportional scaling. So it pays attention to the orientation of your fingers on the screen. So if you put your fingers vertically, it's going to stretch that design up and down. Let's do that. I'm putting my fingers on vertically. And I'm stretching the design up and down, just like that. If I go horizontally, it stretches the design right to left. And you know what? Yep, that's what it does. Now, if I go and put my fingers at a diagonal, and if I were perfect at 45 degree diagonal, it would, it's going to scale both vertically and horizontally, and it gives the impression of proportional scaling, but it's really not. It's not proportional scaling, it's just that I got really close with my fingers. So I can shrink that back up again, I can stretch it up here, do that, move it, and you know what, good. So look how close I was. I was scale of X, I had 99% and scale of Y, 100%. <clears throat> Excuse me. But let me look at what it really was. So it was at 99, I'll go back to 100, boom, and see if I was, and I'm at 100 there. Okay, so I'm back to the original scaling of that design. And it really lends itself to be, in this particular case, it lends itself to be scaled as a, you know, square. So I'm going to leave it that way, because it, you know, that looks it looks fine. Now underneath that I also have rotation. Now I can rotate three different ways. One, first way, is using three fingers. And I gesture that, so I'm putting my three fingers on the screen and I'm rotating that design. Just like that. I can also use the buttons. The next level of the... So three fingers is probably the coarsest. The next one is I can use the rotation buttons, negative and positive, and I can go one degree at a time. That's my one degree rotation. I'm going counterclockwise and clockwise. And then say I want to go to my, my most purest form of rotation is to click the yellow box and I can press in there, <clears throat> so it's at 32.64, I want to go to 32 degrees and say OK, and it goes to 32 degrees identically. This is really cool. Now say I want to, say I wanted to uh, align this design to one of the edges and get it like right on the edge of, of the, the block. 
I'm not saying that you would do this in practice, but you might. But I want to show you the feature, this pan and zoom feature that we have in Cubot version 3. So the next one is that little button under there that's that, mi that magnifying glass. I've just switched it to on. I'm going to now when I gesture in that screen, I'm moving the area. It's like you'd see a norm normal gesturing. I'm not manipulating the design. I'm just using it to manipulate the display so I can zoom in. So I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to see, oh, you know what? I want that design to align to the bottom. So once I'm zoomed in, then I turn off my pan and zoom feature and then I can use my finger to move the design down just so that it touches. And you can see that it's touching just ever so slightly <clears throat> that bottom boundary. That allows me to get a very, very detailed and precise placement of my designs. Now this might be helpful in the future when you want to align something to a previous design where you want something to come and just, you know, you had a, a previous quilt that, a line of stitching that did something like this and in the new version or in the new design you're quilting now, you want it to come in tangent and actually meet. You can choose a point along this design that's already quilted. You can choose a point and that can be part of your boundary. Even though, and you know, you just have to know that when you're selecting, you can say, oh, let me make, let me select points along this line of stitching and I'll treat that as my boundary. Then when you put in your new design, you can line it up to that boundary, which is really not a boundary, it's a piece of stitching, but the tablet doesn't know. It just knows that it, those were the points selected. Well, then you can align things really cool. I mean, and get, get things to match perfectly. Or say you have an edge to edge here that had an open tail that is supposed to match up with a corner and you do the corner first, well, when you choose your area for your edge to edge, choose the end point of your corner design as one of your points, as one of your nodes. <clears throat> then when you pull in your, your edge to edge, you can say, oh, let me align that perfectly, and it's gonna nail it every time. So that's a really neat feature. Now I'm going to double tap, <coughs> excuse me, double tap this to get it back to the original size, and I really don't want that stitching to touch the boundary. That was just an example of the, the precision that we have in V3 for placement and to show that really cool modifications that we can do well surpasses anything that we could do in the previous versions of Cubot and it's really a nice, uh, really nice features of modification, very easily seamless and very quick to be able to modify these designs in this manner. So I'm just gonna place this back up to where I, I'd like it to be and I'm going to change, no, I'm just going to leave the rotation as it is. That looks good. So let's see how this thing quilts out. And then we'll also look at percent restart. So let's press done here and get this show on the road. Let's get some quilting going on. So I press the done button. Once I am finished with my, any modifications that I make, I press done. And let's look at the buttons on the left-hand panel again. What's that top button say? That top button says save pattern. And that is really, really cool. What this means is say you've done a lot of modifications to the original design and you're going to use that modified design later in your quilt. You don't have to go through those modifications over and over and over again. You can just save the pattern, give it a name, and then reuse it in that quilt. Or save it back down to your, your file storage somewhere else and keep it in a folder of saved patterns once you've gotten the design the way you want it to look. That is a time saver and it's a big relief. Also, it's a big relief if anything goes wrong while you're quilting. If you've saved that pattern after you've done a lot of modification, if you've saved that pattern and something goes wrong, the power goes out, whatever, it doesn't matter because you have it saved. All you have to do is pick your, your, your uh, area again, the, design, the points around the uh, perimeter, plop in your saved design, and you're good to go. You don't have to redo anything. It's great. The next item down is modify. Okay, so you can modify the design again. Once you've pressed done, you thought you were done modifying it, 
you get to this point, you go, oh, I need to change something again. You can modify again and go back. Remove, say you've modified things and you say, you know what, I really don't like that design after all. I'm just gonna remove it and start over. And it, you'll start over with the area that you've already chosen. Well, I like it, I chose it, I've modified it, and I wanna move to start. So now I just press the move to start button. It processes the design and then moves to the start point. Now I'm going to pull up my bobbin thread like I always do and hold on to that when I begin quilting. And I'm going to press go. And you can see right there it just did the tie off stitches to tie off my design. And it's stitching this stitching this design out. So everything's going well. I don't have to really worry about it. But let's say the thread broke or something happened in a little bit. I'm going to let it stitch a little bit more. <clears throat> okay, let's say the thread broke. You know what? Let's just uh, yeah, let's say the thread broke. If that happens, I hit pause. You hit pause and the machine pauses and it stays in the same spot and the carriages are still locked because we don't know what the next step is. You hit pause but maybe you had to go answer the door or something like that and you're going to come back. So it just stays paused right in its location. We have the choice here on the left continue, percent restart, or end. Maybe things got so bad that you just want to end it right there and pull out stitches or something. It was, it was something happened, you know, you just, it happens. You just press end and everything stops there. Or say the thread broke, which we're pretending it did here, and we need to do a percent restart. So let's, pers let's press percent restart. Done. The carriages are now unlocked and I'm going to move things out of the way and I'm actually going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my threads so that we can st start as if my thread broke. And we now have the carriage free and I need to do a percent restart. On the left hand panel now we have a series of, of things starting from the coarsest to the finest resolution in choosing a restart position. Now, we don't have to guess at a percentage. We could guess at a percentage. Right now it says 57%. If I press that, I could say, oh, let me see what 30% does. And then you can see an orange dot on the screen and that shows you where 30% of the design was. I can go backwards using, I can go back 100 nodes at a time by pressing the triple arrow button. That's that big button at the top or the second row. I push that and I'm going back 100 nodes at a time and I'm at a 0% right now, which is a start point. I go 100 nodes and I'm already at that point in the design in the lower left. So that's kind of coarse. So I'm going to choose the two arrow button, which is just 10 nodes. And I see that, oh, there's 10 nodes, 10, 10, 10, 10, yep. And I, I see that, okay, I'm looking at my quilt and I'm putting my you can see the crosshairs on the thing on the screen. That's where I ended, right around there. So I'm going to move my orange pill. I'm going to move that orange pill or orange dot to near that location and then fine tune it that way. So I'm just going to hit the, the plus two arrow here until I find myself at that location. Oop, now I'm close. Let me just see. Yeah, there it is. Now I can go back. And I'm just hitting the, the single arrow. And what I'm doing is I'm going through the design node by node. I don't have to guess a percentage. I don't have to hover over my design. I can go directly to the point that I want to go to. So I'm going to go back to, you know what, I'm just going to go back a little bit further right to there. And then I'm going to say move to restart position. It processes the design then moves right to that position where I can now pull up my thread
and then press go. So it's just that easy in V3 to pick a percent restart position. We still call it percent restart position because we want to tie into version one and version two so it kind of all makes sense to all of our Qbot users. But for new users, you can choose a percent along the path and that's the percentage of nodes that have been completed. Or use the triple arrow which advances or goes, advances or goes back in the pattern 100 nodes at a time or the two arrows, which advances or goes back 10 nodes at a time, or the single arrow, which goes one node at a time. We also have a zoom feature in case the design shows on the screen very small, like an edge to edge. You're doing a 10 foot edge to edge that is, well, 10 feet long and it's maybe four inches tall. And it all looks like a really, it's hard to discern the pattern on the screen. We have that little zoom button where we press that we can zoom in using our fingers to zoom into the particular location and choose our restart position that way so that we know exactly where we are at all times. It really is a slick feature. And at the end of the quilting here, we did our tie off stitches. And at, also at the end, we have on our left hand side, the buttons that say save pattern. Again, another overlay and exit. So notice that we give you two choices, two chances to save that pattern. One before you quilt, one time before you quilt, and maybe one time you, you thought, oh, I should have saved that pattern. Uh, after it's quilted out, you can save the pattern again. We give you a, an opportunity to save yourself and save yourself some frustration, you know, manipulating things in the future. We give you two times, two opportunities to save that pattern. I'm done with this particular thing because we're gonna get into line quilting next. I'm done with this pattern quilting example, so I'm going to press exit. And that takes me back to the main screen where I can choose to do the next option. Now, on your quilt, you might want to do pattern quilting again. You're just going to be putting designs in, uh, in your quilt. Perfect. What we're doing for this sneak peek is line quilting, which is a brand new feature to version 3. It is extremely powerful a time saver and something that you would never think you could live without. So let's take a look at this new feature in V3, line quilting. It is amazing. I may seem overly excited about this, but I am really just excited about it. And I don't think it's overly excited. It is amazing. It, it, it allows the user to do a lot of things at the quilt that before you would have had to do in free motion or try to or you would try to go into your design software to make a specific little box or something like that to fit it into a particular area. This is such a time-saving feature and it adds an element to your quilting that uh, you really didn't know you needed until you start using it. It's really amazing. So let's press the button. Let's show you what this is. When you press line quilting, you can see that it brings up our familiar, now familiar, right hand quilting pane and the left hand pane where it gives all the information and buttons and stuff. It looks very similar to the pattern quilting pane. We have our brown box that shows the coordinates, but underneath that we have a new radio button choice, closed path or open path. And since you're in line quilting, closed path means you're going to choose points, as many points as you like, and at the end when you press done it's going to close the path so that you're going basically from node to node that you choose with a straight line and at the end after you choose that last one it closes the path and links those the beginning node to the ending node. Simple enough. We also have open uh, path quilting. An open path quilting means that it doesn't connect those last, the last point to the first point. So if you're doing a line across a quilt or you're doing a, a zigzag across a quilt, you don't close the path. You say, I start here and I end here. That's really all there is to that choice. So let's do, on this little quilt I've got here, let's do 
some closed path quilting and I'm going to outline the roof of this house. So I'm going to choose closed path like it is. I'm now going to go around and I'm going to choose points around our perimeter of the roof. So boom, set the point. And I'm doing the best I can because my needle doesn't go right down through the center of my foot. I don't have a laser on here. So I'm just doing my best to go around this roof. And I'm just choosing points as I go. And as I'm choosing points, they're popping up on the screen. And let's see. And there's my final one, and then I say done. So there is the roof of that, um, of that area on the quilt, and it, it makes that path. Now let's look at, again, let's look at that left-hand pane, and you're going to see something even cooler. You see that? It says save pattern. So when would we use this? Maybe not with this little roof design, but say you've got an art quilt or uh, it doesn't have to be an art quilt, but say you've got a traditional quilt and you want to make a fill for a particular area on that quilt and you know that the quilt isn't perfect, it's going to have some minor, you know, minor nuances to it, well you can go into your line quilting on Cubot V3. Choose the area on the quilt as it's on the frame in line quilting save that area as a pattern. Then pull that pattern or area or boundary into your quilting software. Do whatever fill, whatever designs you want, anything you need to do and save that new design as a file which you bring into V3 and then you just choose that area one more time and the design you've made fits perfectly because it was designed for that perfect area. You don't have to measure things on the quilt and, and then draw that in your software. You just click the buttons as it really is. You click go, 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 go on the QBot here to set those points and then you pull that pattern into your software and then you can fill that pattern, do whatever you want with that pattern because we're calling it a pattern but it really is the boundary of the quilting area. It's really slick and it's a creative use of this feature. It's not just for stitching. You can use it as a design tool when you're doing some complicated stuff. You can use it as a design tool with your design software. It's really cool. And you don't have to second guess yourself with measurements and trying to plot all these points and draw it. You just click it and it's already done. So that's really cool. So I've got this uh, in here. Let's move to the start point. and pull up my thread. And sew it out. Press go. Here's my automatic tie off stitches. and it outlines that roof. And what this really tells me is that I need to align my needle to the center of my foot so I can choose those points better. And there you have it. Done. Just that easy. You can also then do this whole design on this, on this particular example that I'm doing. You could do line quilting on everything. Do roofing shingles. You could do outline the window. You could do all of that stuff. So, you know what, let's do that. I'm going to do that. I'm going to cut my, cut my thread here. And I'm going to do a better job of choosing my points. I'm going to pull up my bobbin thread and trim it. Then I'm going to unthread the needle so I can sink the needle properly when I'm choosing my points. So I'm going to outline the right hand or the left hand side of this house. I say exit here, then line quilting, and now I'm going to set my points. 
but I'm going to be smart about it here this time. Okay, set point. And I'm using my jog button to make sure that I'm going in the right part of the fabric. But I have the needle unthreaded. And it's a way I can make sure I get, get as close as I possibly can. Now, of course, when you start quilting, the fabric moves a little bit. But this is a lot better than just kind of eyeing it. And I'm going to say done. And there I have my, my uh, boundary of the side of my house. Press move to start point. Pull up my bobbin thread. And press go. And you can see when you choose your points precisely, you get those precise results. And it's just that easy to do some creative stitching. You didn't have to measure anything. You didn't have to design that. You didn't have to freehand that. You just go into line quilting, choose points, press go. It's awesome. Now, there's, within line quilting, there's also some other really neat features that I'm, that I'm going to show you right now. You know how when you're basting a quilt at the top, you want to put in a, a straight line across the top. Well, now we can just choose two points, point one and point two, and draw a straight line across it. No problem. Or say it's a really long, it's a really long quilt and it's kind of wonky at the top. You know, I mean, it happens where it, you can't get things perfectly aligned. Well, you can choose points, say, a quarter of an inch down along that whole line, across that whole line. Let's pretend we're doing that now. Then, we're, but you still want a straight line through them. You want, and you want an X line that's aligned to the, to the carriage rails. Even though the quilt's a little off, you don't, want a, you don't want a basting line that's wavy, because then as you roll the quilt, it's going to, that, that waviness is going to propagate through the quilt and not be nice. You want to have a straight line of stitching through some points that are a little bit wonky at the top. No problem. It's called our X line in line quilting. So I'm going to exit here. I'm going to jog, get, well, clip my threads here all together <clears throat> so I can demonstrate this X line feature, what it really means. So say I'm going to choose some points across this panel and I'm going to choose them in you know, a random kind of fashion. I go into line quilting and I'm going to do an open path and I'm starting over on the left hand side and I'm just choosing points and I'm going across and we'll pretend that these are points that are along the top of a quilt that we're trying to baste. I'm not being particularly careful at all. And you can see that on the screen, I've chosen a bunch of points like that. Well, I say done. And then up at the top left, you see I have three choices. And I also have those choices on the Cubot head that I can cycle through. Point to point, where it will sew from point to point to point to point to point. Not exactly what we want to do when we're basting. Or X only. That's pretty cool. So I'm going to choose X only. And when I say move to start, You can see that it's drawn on the screen a black line 
through those red line, through the red line, which is what I actually chose, those are the points I actually chose. Well, it draw, draws a black line, which is the median of those points. So not the average, but the median. So it captures the, the middle ground between the, up, the furthest north and the furthest, furthest th south point, draws a line straight across. So when you're putting down that quilt for the first time, your basting line is a nice average of all of those chosen points. And you just press go, which I'm not gonna do here. I don't wanna sew on my quilt here. Press go and it sews it right across. It's really great. We have also the same feature for doing a Y line. So you can choose two points and it's a, a direct line, which is, it, it could be angled. Or if you choose two points and say Y line, it puts an average line right down between those two points. It's a really slick feature and it's made to make our lives a lot easier when we're doing alignments, when we just want a straight line between two points, when we're doing in stitch in the ditch uh, quilting, we can use point to point quilting there. We can do all kinds of stuff right at the frame. No more going back to software. No more scratching our heads out about making sure that, oh, if I make this particular box, how is it going to fit and all that stuff. Easy. And it's really, really great. And I think you're going to enjoy line, line quilting as much as you can tell I enjoy line quilting. It is amazing.